Hey guys, I want to do a video on Psalm 41, and I want to look at a specific passage, um, verses 5 through 10. And I've read this many times. It's got the prophecy of Judas betraying Jesus in Psalm 41, 9, that is quoted by Jesus in John 13, 18. So many of us know this prophecy, but the Word of God never ceases to amaze me. And when I read it this morning, for the first time I saw it in a new light and the context around Psalm 41.9. And it wasn't only a prophecy of the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot, but it was a prophecy of the events concerning the time leading up to his death, burial, and resurrection, and those events that happened on the week of his death, burial, and resurrection until after his resurrection on the third day. So let's get our spiritual glasses as I often say and just quickly read this verse. I'll put a few other little verses together with this for um, you know to, to make connections but let's start in verse 5 and this is David um, speaking these words, writing these words through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost but I want us to look at this through our spiritual glasses looking this as if the Lord himself is speaking this. And when you do, you're going to see this passage in a whole new light. In verse 5, let's say this is the Lord speaking, Jesus Christ. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, Jesus speaking of his enemies, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleareth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. This is a prophecy of Jesus being crucified and dead and buried. And his enemies saying, he shall rise up no more, he's dead. Then verse 9, Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Speaking of the prophecy that we see fulfilled in John 13, 18, when Jesus says, I speak not of you all. Jesus speaking to his disciples. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. And then in verse 10, But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. So this is amazing. And this shows the events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion, his betrayal in verse 9 that those who said crucify him, crucify him, let his blood be upon us, thinking that he shall rise up no more, and that's the end of that. That's the end of his name. But yet, the Father, the Spirit of the Father, raise up the Son, bodily resurrection on the third day, to judge the quick and dead. So let's look at a few verses and go back through this just so we can digest it. Because this is amazing. Again, um, the Bible never ceases to amaze me. But when I read this this morning, uh, it was kind of jaw-dropping. Um, I don't know if anybody's taught this. I never really look at you know sermons about, has anybody seen this prophecy or that prophecy? Um, things like that. I just put it up if I see it. But going back to verse 5. Um, you know, my enemies speak evil of me. Again, we're looking at this through uh, the voice of the Lord, the word of God. When shall he die and his name perish? Well, we see Jesus being counseled against uh, throughout his ministry. For instance, in John 11, verse 47, 
Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So the Jewish leaders formed a council because they were afraid that they would lose their name. They were established in their own name. They lost sight of the name of the Lord and that Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecy. And one of them named Caiaphas, continuing in verse 49, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Um, so continuing in verse 6, And if ye come to see me, again, Jesus, imagine Jesus on the cross um, being seen by those who had heard him say, In three days I will build the temple again, um, and then mocking him. Um, as he died on the cross, um, it continues, his heart, meaning his enemy's heart, gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. And we see that, we saw that, uh, in scripture, um, at his crucifixion. We saw those who came to see him spoke vanity, reviling him. In Matthew 27, for instance, in verse 39, and they that passed by him reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocking him when the scribes and elders said he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come now, come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusts in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And then even after Jesus' resurrection, they continue to go abroad, speak in vanity, telling lies after his bodily resurrection, and the body was not there. Um, they continue to make up lies. Um, in Matthew 28, for instance, starting in verse 11, Behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. This is after Jesus' bodily resurrection. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept, and if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So we see fulfillment of each verse within the time of Jesus' ministry and more specifically his death burial and resurrection all that hate me whisper together against me against me do they devise my hurt uh, jesus even spoke parables about this um you know the the parable of the husbandman for instance where he goes away to a far country uh and sends some servants and they kill him and then finally the husband sends him his son says surely um they will honor my son uh, but they killed the son um they devised his hurt. Um, you know, just Matthew 21, I just paraphrased it, but, you know, just picking up in um, verse 35, and the husband took the servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did, did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. So they wanted to seize upon his inheritance, upon his name. Uh, and that's what we see in the Bible. The name means something. Um, you know, the, the firstborn got a double portion of the inheritance. Um, the Jews were establishing their own righteousness in their own nation, in their own name, and they rejected the teachings of Scripture, the prophecies of the Messiah, um, and they were blinded to Jesus Christ when he 
came among his brethren and ended up crucifying the Son of God. Verse 8 again, evil disease say they cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. So again, showing Jesus' death on the cross and him being buried. Uh, and for three days, they said, we will never have to hear his name again. He's just another man. But... Skipping over the betrayal in verse 9 that we've already gone over. Verse 10, But thou, Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. Obviously, there's so many passages um, where we can show this being fulfilled, but I'll just briefly read Acts 10, um, verses 38 through 43, when Jesus um, is being preached, the name of Jesus is being preached by Peter. Um, to the house of Cornelius and in and, um, and his household and those that were about uh, to hear the gospel, the name of Jesus Christ proclaimed. And Peter said in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Showing the fulfillment of God's promise since the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, reconciled the world unto himself. God reconciled the world unto himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did something that nobody has ever done or will ever be able to do to lead a sinless life and die for the sins of the world and rise again bodily, alive forevermore, overcoming death for those who believe on him. He died for our sins. That's what you believe, that he is who he claimed to be, Son of God, the Lamb of God, who died for the sin of the world. Place your trust in the finished, redemptive work of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and life everlasting. God bless.